Hi students, welcome to my discussion on inventory cost flows. Thanks for joining me today. The example I'm using is taken from Hungren's 10th edition, page 405, it's exercise 617. Your author has you complete inventory records in all of your calculating cost flows for Chapter 6. And since that tends to be a bit confusing for students the first time they do it, I'd like to make one with you. Let's zone in on our data. It says our requirement is to calculate total cost of goods sold and ending inventory using FIFO. Let's review our facts. On November 2nd, we purchased 8 gallons of milk. On November 6th, we purchased 2 more. We now have 10 gallons in inventory. On November 8th, we sold 3. The question is, which 3 did we sell? That makes a difference on the cost. Under FIFO, you would say the first items in or the first items out. So if you had 10 and you sold 3, you have 7 left, and then you purchase 2 more. 7 and 2 is 9 gallons of varying prices. And then finally you sell 4 of those, leaving you with 5 units in ending inventory. And again, the question is, what's the cost of the milk sold? So let's complete the first row of the inventory record. So I made my first entry in my inventory record on November 2nd. I purchased 8 units at $2 each for a total of $16. Notice I am calculating the purchases amount here. I didn't sell any, I just purchased some. Now let's move to the inventory on hand calculation. I have 8 units at $2 each on hand for a total of $16 in inventory. That completes recording the purchase of 8 gallons at $2 each. Now let's do another row for a purchase of 2 gallons at $2.10 each. Notice again I completed the purchases row because it was a purchase. On November 6th, I purchased two at $2.10, and that added $4.20 from that purchase. Now it's time to move to the far, the far column on the right and complete inventory on hand. Bear with me while I type this out so you can understand how this column works. I think this is the column that causes you grief. You have a couple of layers of inventory now. You have your first layer, which was 8 units at $2 each, and if that's the case, 8 times 2 is 16. So that's your first layer, but now you have another layer of inventory because you added 2 more at a unit price of $2.10. And if you extend the math of that out, those particular units are at two dollars and ten cents per unit and two times two ten will be four twenty. So you have two layers in ending inventory now. You have eight units at two dollars each and two units at two dollars and ten cents each. And if you were to run a total here, your author doesn't oh it looks like I can't either. If you were to run the total here, it would be $20.20 made up of the two different layers. Then, let's move on to our sale of November 8th. Since it's a sale, we'll show it in the cost of goods sold column. And I show three units are sold, and the unit cost would be from my first layer because the first stuff in is the first stuff out. So it would be coming out at $2. 3 times $2 is $6. And what does that leave for my quantity on hand? 
Well, I had eight units, but I sold three of them. So I now have five units at two dollars each left from the first slur and five times two is ten dollars and my second layer is intact. I still have the two units from my first or from my second purchase and it, as I recall they were at two dollars and ten cents a unit. Two times two ten gives me four twenty. So my inventory now consists of five units at two dollars each and two units at 210 for a total of 1420. Let's do the next transaction where you purchase two more gallons on November 13th. You go ahead and write that in. Enter it in your purchases column and then calculate your inventory on hand by layers and come back and see how you did. Notice in my purchases column, I added, I purchased two, $2.20 per unit for a total of $4.40. And then notice what happens in my inventory on hand column. What I have on hand is now three layers. The two, I don't bring that up. Let's see if we can do that and not have that come up. There you go. The two, at two dollars each for ten dollars total. Two from our second purchase at two dollars and ten for a total of four twenty. And the third purchase two at two twenty for four forty. If you add the ten and the four twenty and the four forty together, you'll see that right now my ending inventory consists of three lights that total eighteen sixty. Now in our last example, we are going to show you on November 14th, we sold four of the gallons. And what was it that we sold? Which layers? Remember, we're doing first in and first out. First, calculate the cost of goods sold, as we did with our first example. And then show what's left in your inventory on hand. Put me on pause, give it a go, and come back and see how you do. Welcome back. So we entered on November 14th, but we sold four units. Now, which four is it that we sell? You'll recall this was what we had in inventory at this time. And the first stuff in is the first items to go. So those four are going to come out of our first layer. Five at two dollars and ten cents. So. We'll pull that cost of $2 each down and show the total cost of goods sold on that sale of $8. Then we'll go ahead and calculate ending inventory. And notice that will be one left from the first layer. There was five minus four, one left. And the other two layers, the 210 and the 220, remain intact. Your author now would like you to do totals for your inventory record. So let's go ahead and do that. How many units were totally available? Well, total available for a whole period were 12. How many of those did we sell? We sold three and then four, so we t sold a total of seven units. How many are left? Well, this is what we have left in ending inventory, so there must be five units left, and if you add up the total value of the five units, you'll see that that comes to ten dollars and sixty cents. We had two, four twenty, and four forty. What is our total cost of goods sold? Well, we know we sold a total of seven units, but what was their cost? their total cost to us. And if you add that column up, 6 and 8 is 14. So our total cost of goods sold for the period is 14, and our ending inventory is $10.60.
And that is how you calculate inventory cost flows. For our example, using FIFO, cost of goods sold, and ending inventory were calculated in the bottom rows. Cost of goods sold was 14, ending inventory 1060. Hey, thanks for joining me. You can see this is not going to be too bad. Let's move on to LIFO. Last in is the first out. 